Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Carlson's Lab. Let's get started. Hi, everyone. This is an update on the antenna project. So this has taken an incredible amount of time, and this is the reason it's been so much time between this and the last video. So there's been lots and lots of fabrication going on with this antenna and experimentation. And uh, this is what I've come up with so far. Now, this is going to still go on from here. I have a lot more things to do, but this is where I am at this point. So for those of you that are new here, uh, and for those of you that are here, the, the ones that are here will know that I'm moving two labs at this time, and I'm also building this antenna and doing all sorts of other things at the same time. So this is the reason that, um, you know, this project is just taking so long. There's just so much going on. So for those of you that know me, you know that I basically don't sleep. And uh, that's the only way to get this stuff done. So uh, it's just been nonstop. The moving the labs and everything is just yeah, the work is nothing short of incredible, really. It's uh, all time consuming. So back to the antenna here. So the structure that you see on the bottom is what's holding the antennas tight. So you'll see that kind of a, an apparatus there and you'll see some springs. So what I'll do is I'll just move this. So you see the springs here and then you'll see the rope at the top there. So that's just the access rope that's um, basically running up to the top that's holding the wires tight. I'd like to trim that off and clean things up, but I really need to have that there because if I need to let down the wires, I need to have the rope to do it. So it's just bundled up and a zap strap to the, uh, to the upper support there. So the springs are coupled to the, the ropes that hold them tight. So we go way up the mast here, way up to the top. I'm gonna need to look through my viewfinder now to see this. Or way up to the top you'll see there's the three insulators now I don't know if this is going to let me go any further up let's see if I can back this out a bit there's the three pulleys up there right at the top and then there's the three ropes that are running down the reason that they're on angles like that is so that they don't rub the mast and those ropes they go through some pulleys that are right there at that point center screen and then you'll see that they're on a slight bit of an angle to keep tension on those pulleys and then they run down to these springs and those springs will stretch to six feet and uh, still retain their their form so there's a lot of room there so uh, you'll notice that one of the uh, one of the little eyelets on the bottom that holds the spring is a little shorter than the other that's the center wire so the center wire needs to be the tightest up at the top here with all the pulleys so if we go back up to the top and we look at over at the insulators right here. So what I'm going to do is just lock the tripod here. I'd carry this camera, but you'd probably get motion sickness. This camera's so heavy, it's really hard to hold stable. So I'll just zoom on in. So those are the three insulators right up there. And uh, the top wire is tuned to 3 megahertz. The middle wire is tuned to 6 megahertz and the bottom wire is tuned to nine megahertz. So I call this my 369 antenna. And of course, this is gonna be using the third harmonic principle, so it'll be operating at one and a half wavelengths. So that gives me a sweep of the entire HF band really nicely. Lots of peaks and valleys, but it'll allow me to tune it quite nicely. Now I've also tried this with an HF receiver that I, I would classify as very average, all right? I use this to test many of my antennas. And if it makes this average receiver receive very well it's a good it's a good antenna and let me tell you that average receiver is acting like a high performance receiver so this is working very very well this antenna so there's still more to come i have a lot more to do with this this is just where i am at this point so you can see the wires they run over here and they run over to the feed point and what i'll do is i'll move the camera to the center here and i'll take a look at the sweep of the wires and i'll show you the insulators that allow me to uh, use the antenna at three, six, and nine, and then we'll take a look at the feed point. And I even have a picture of the inside of the box, which is nothing special, but I'll share that with you at this point. And again, you know, there's more to come with this antenna. You know, I'm about uh, midway through. There's the point that we were just looking at. So I'll sweep along the wires here. I'll zoom in a little bit. Now, keep in mind, I'm looking through a viewfinder because the sun is just absolutely blinding out here. So those are the wires running across. Pardon the uh, shaky camera work as well because I'm in some pretty interesting positions here trying to get this. So there's one of the insulators that allow me to cut this to electrical length. And there's another one down here. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it, but there's the other one on the bottom line. 
And then this just runs along all the way over to the feed point. I'm going to lose this in the trees here. There we are. And there's the feed point right there. So I'll take you over to the feed point and show you what that's like. That gives you more of an idea of how far away this is. So runs all the way along here. Right up to over here. Here's a look at the feed point for the antenna. You can see how the three antenna wires fan out from that little loop on the end there. That's as close as I can get with this lens. And believe me, that's a long ways away. So the little box I'll show you here in just a moment, the little box in the center of the screen. So nothing really too special. It's just an F connector on the bottom and then the center conductor going to that loop on a porcelain insulator. So the white lead that you see running down is a coax cable from that box. The pulley on this end is fixed, so there's no spring on this end, just because there's a ratio at the other end. So as the pole bends forward, say in the wind, because the pulleys are 18 inches apart to the top of the pole, there's uh, each one of the lines will move at a different rate, let's put it that way. So this end has to be solid and the other end has to have the, the tension on each one of them. So again, you know, one will move more than the other. The top would move the most. The middle, not so much, and then of course the bottom would move the least, right? Because of, you know, just that ratio effect. So it is guy wired and everything, but, um, you know, still to be safe, each one of them have to have the appropriate tension. That's all been measured out and everything as well. The wire that I'm using is 035S6 MIG welding wire. So it's really cheap, solders beautifully, and it's extremely strong, and boy does it want to keep its shape. So I imagine that will be up there for a good long time. So it's copper coated and uh, it's a very nice wire. So that's what I'm using for this. And I'm not sure if you can see the little loops. There's, there's a bunch of little loops here. Uh, right where the, the loop is right there, because the lens is so uh, zoomed in, it's my finger looks all fuzzy, but there's a little white loops right where the wires come in. And that's where it's soldered to a tab that's behind the actual eyelet. So the wires themselves are wound around the eyelet in order, but they're not soldered to the eyelet at that point. So that allows movement right there. So there's a bit of a strain relief through those little white insulated wires. And then it runs back to a tab to where they're soldered to the backside or to the threaded portion of that eyelet. And that runs inside the box. And again, I'll show you that here in a moment. There's a blue lead that's running down. It's kind of running off to the backside here. You can kind of see it on an angle. And uh, I haven't hooked that up. That's just the common yet. And uh, I'm going to cut that to length as well. And uh, maybe, you know, tune things a little bit more using my VNA just to kind of optimize on this antenna. So I'll fill you in a little bit more about this uh, when we're at the desk, taking a look at the box here. And uh, I'll show you that box. So again, you know, this antenna project is far from done at this point. You know, I've, I've still got lots of stuff to do. But I can tell you this, it is performing like a champ. I'm really, really happy with this, uh, with this antenna system. Here's a quick look at the little box that's up at the antenna mass pipe. So a rope ties to this and goes to the pulley on one side, and this will be fixed. There'll be no weights on this side. And that will hold this up. And then the three wires for each antenna will come off this loop. So the top wire will be wound up here. The middle one will be here and then the bottom uh, wire, long wire, will be at this point here. So basically three, six, nine at this point right here. They'll be wound around and then the wires will be soldered to this loop right here just to make it a nice solid connection. And as you can see, it's just a carry through through this porcelain insulator right to the center conductor of the, the coax that's going to be fastened at this point here. This is where I'm going to run a piece of number 14 wire down as an actual ground. And that will also hold the box so that this will not move like this in the wind. It will have a little bit of downforce here so that it, it can't twist. Because since there's three wires fanning off of this point here, there's a chance that you know this could try to rotate even though there's this piece of coax on here, right? It might pull the coax around a little bit. So it kind of works as a kind of as a, I guess, a double purpose there. So this is up at the feed point. And then of course this goes back towards the other lab. So that's that there. The first box that I used was actually quite a bit smaller, but when I tightened this up, they had a bunch of ribs inside the box and it cracked the box. So that one was not a Hammond box. So this is a Hammond box and they don't have those ridges inside here. So this one here, these are very tight and everything is just fine. So 
The next time I will be using a Hammond box for the other one. The other one, it looked just like this, but it was this big. So I had to make a bigger box I only had these ones. And these are also weatherproof. There's a seal that goes around here as well. So that this can be up in the weather. All this gray stuff you see here is silicone. So there's silicone pressed into the hole and under all the nuts and everything. So everything will be completely weather tight. This is full of silicone in here and under these seals. Under the actual little porcelain standoffs, there's, there are little... Um, I guess you could say uh, it looks like a cardboard material, like a little cardboard washer under here. So I took the cardboard washer and smeared it with silicone to make sure that no water gets in there. And there's one on each side. You need that cardboard anyway as a cushion because if you tighten porcelain up against anything like this, it'll end up cracking. So that's all in there. So this is all ready to go back together. And uh, again, go up at the feed point. If you're enjoying my videos, you can let me know by giving me a big thumbs up and hang around. There'll be more videos like this coming in the near future. We'll be taking a look at vacuum tube and solid state electronic devices alike. So if you haven't subscribed, now would be a good time to do that as well. If you'd like to be notified as soon as I post a new video, don't forget to tap that bell symbol. If you're interested in taking your electronics knowledge to the next level and learning electronics in a very different and effective way and gaining access to many of my personal electronic inventions and designs, you're definitely going to want to check out my ongoing electronics course on Patreon. I'll put the link just below the show more tab below the video's description and I'll also pin the link at the top of the comments section so if you click on the link it'll take you right there. Alright, until next time, take care. Bye for now.